be named Lauren Ed of 5073 Bristol Court. Tonight I will address the unknown return on investment and the possibility of Native American remains on the site of the proposed garage. According to Logan's finance director, counseling's already spent almost $980,000 for purchase, demolition, and design of the multi-million dollar garage. Even if all the grants that Loveland has applied for come through, Loveland taxpayers will still be responsible for at least $2 million before any cost overruns are added in. There have been comments from some on council that COVID money might be used. COVID money should be used for projects that will benefit Loveland citizens, not just a few downtown businesses. Loveland has a looming water infrastructure repair bill and the COVID money would be better spent to address this problem instead of raising Loveland's water rates, something that has already been discussed. While the garage may feather the nest of downtown businesses, will the garage actually benefit Loveland residents? Some might say that increased revenue from downtown businesses due to the garage will grow Loveland's coffers. However, when city staff is asked about how much revenue comes from downtown businesses, they are, they are unable to provide answers. What they do say is that there are numerous downtown businesses who have CRAs or tax abatements, meaning they are paying a reduced tax bill to Loveland. These businesses include Rody, the Landing Event Center, Tahona, Ramsey's Trailside, Bishop's Quarters, and Tano Bistro. These property tax abatements last for at least four years and up to 12 years. So Loveland is reducing our potential property tax income through abatement. Now to the theory that possible increased income tax due to the garage construction will help Loveland financially. Any individual working in Loveland pays the city 1% of their salary in income tax. Let's assume that all employees in downtown area make $1 million combined for the year. Loveland would receive 1% of that income, or just $10,000 a year. That amount would not even pay for the upkeep of the garage for that year. Any council member who values fiscal responsibility and who has vowed to protect Loveland's financial resources must analyze whether the proposed garage is a wise return on investment for the citizens and then share those findings with residents. The second topic for tonight deals with the possibility of Native American remains on the site of the proposed garage. In a report commissioned by Hamilton County in 2019, a historical preservation consultant stated, quote, there is some potential for archaeological resources on the property based on an 1848 flat of Loveland, which identifies it as being the location of a mound. Consultation with the State Historic Preservation Office regarding the need for an archaeological survey is recommended prior to new construction. Once we learned of this report, we shared it immediately with Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Bateman. We have also been in communication with the Ohio History Connection, who encouraged us to, quote, advocate that the city hire an archaeologist to do a survey of the area to confirm that there is indeed a mound or not at that location, end quote. Residents of Loveland, along with the Sierra Club, Citizens for the Right to the Ohio Watershed, the University of Cincinnati Student Organization, Leaders for Environmental Awareness and Protection, and the Greater Cincinnati Native American Coalition, who we will hear from tonight, are all in agreement. We will all advocate for an archaeological survey to be done and for community approval for the garage via a referendum. We request that the council commission a study immediately. We are passionate about protecting Loveland and the land itself. We are passionate not because we are uninformed, as some have stated, but because we are incredibly informed. We, as individuals and as organizations, will continue to be involved and engaged in Loveland's political life because we see this as a right and as our duty. We will continue to advocate for increased transparency in use of data-driven decisions by Loveland staff and city council. We will advocate without using intimidation, without name-calling others, and without misquoting others. We will remain professional and respectful, using research and facts as the basis of our advocacy. Thank you. Thank you.